Hi, I'm Shauna Slayton. I am the author of Cinderella's Dress, a Cinderella retelling set in the 1940s. I am talking with other authors who have written Cinderella retellings, and today I am talking to five of them. We're doing a Google Hangout. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty. So right now I actually have two authors and one editor. We're going to try and splice the others in later. So to start off, Anne Elizabeth, you are an author in your own right. But for this particular project, the Five Glass Slippers, you are the editor. Can you tell me how this project came together? Yes, certainly. Uh, here's the story of how Five Glass Slippers came to be. I have been building a lovely network of blogger friends and acquaintances over the last few years since beginning my own writing career. As I read various blog posts and story snippets shared by some of these bloggers, I was impressed by the vast amount of raw talent out there in my network. All of these aspiring novelists with wonderful ideas and fresh voices just waiting for the right opportunity to launch their careers. In early 2013, I began building my own small company, Rugalwood Press, all the while keeping an eye out for interesting projects we might like to get involved in. That was when I hit upon the idea. What about a writing contest? And as a lover of all things fairy tale and magical, I immediately thought Cinderella for the theme. So after much discussion with the folks at Rugalwood Press, we put together the Five Glass Slippers Creative Writing Contest and launched it on June 1st, 2013. Writers <laughs> across the globe were encouraged to submit stories between 5,000 and 20,000 words long, each retelling the classic Cinderella tale. The results of this contest were truly astounding. We had submissions come in from as far out as Rwanda and New Zealand, and we received stories in all manner of genres. There, there were horror stories and Wild West adventures, modern day thrillers, sci-fi and steampunk, not to mention the more classic fairy tale settings. My fellow judges and I had a tremendous task narrowing, narrowing down to just five winners. But I can honestly say that the young authors featured here in the beautiful Five Glass Slippers volume gave us the cream of the crop. Their stories were each so charming, so unique, and truly unforgettable. I am very proud to present their work to our reading audience. Yay! <laughs> you know, I have to agree. This was just such a unique collection. To me, it's amazing that there's, it, it was the same, tell the Cinderella story, but the stories are so different, and to read them back to back is really kind of cool. I have to say, you ladies that are with me right now, you did an excellent job. Thank you. Now, to introduce your stories, if you could just uh, say what your name is, a little bit, bit about yourself, and what your story is. All right. Uh, I'm Emma Clifton, and uh, I'm still a student in high school. I've been homeschooled all of my life, and uh, outside of school, I enjoy reading and writing and sewing, and I have a deep love for all things Disney. I always have since I was very little. And my story, Broken Glass, is about the glass slipper fitting on the wrong girl named Rosalind. She is already in love with the crown prince's youngest brother, but nevertheless the king decrees that she and the crown prince must marry. Chaos ensues, and Rosalind and her unwanted prince make a tenuous alliance to break the engagement. And I am Clara Diane Thompson. It's so much fun to be here today. But um, I wrote The Moon Master's Ball. And it is about a magical circus that shows up in the small town of Winslow Village and um, shows up every once in a while. And Tilly Higgins, who is a young maid, she's terrified of the circus. But one day she has to go meet the Moon Master who lives among the circus dwellers. All right. Hi, I'm Stephanie Ricker. I work for an association management company by day. I do fiction editing by night, which means I write by late, late night. By the time I finally get to that, but I do enjoy it. I'm the author of A Cinder's Tale, and that story is a Cinderella retelling set in a sci-fi setting, because that's definitely my area. So the Cinderella character, her name is Elsa, and she's a miner. She does, she does mining for ore on a lava planet, so she deals with plasma storms and space station bureaucracy, and she encounters a young and intriguing lieutenant in the galactic fleet. I'm Elizabeth Brown. I'm a student in college. I'm a senior this year studying piano performance. Um, in my story, I wrote What Eyes Can See. 
in the Five Glass Slippers collection, and my story is about a very shy Cinderella who doesn't particularly want to go to the ball, but she is forced by her well-meaning stepmother. And so my story is about the repercussions of that night and her kind stepsister's attempts to help her deal with those repercussions. I'm Rachel Heffington, and I am a nanny when I'm not writing, and I like to call myself a Mary Poppins. And the kids I nanny give me lots of funny stories, and it helps inspire my characters because I also write for children. But my story in The Five Glass Slippers is The Windy Side of Care, and it follows the rather unorthodox Lady Alessandra Carlyle and her quest to reclaim the throne that she lost at birth. And her helpers include a kitchen maid and a stubborn godfather and the prince himself. So it's sort of a, a flippant take on Cinderella. See what I mean? So creative. Cinderella, but not Cinderella. My next question for you, speaking of being creative, the Cinderella story has a lot of symbols. There's the glass slipper, there's the pumpkin, there's the fairy godmother. Can you tell me one of the unique ways that you use one of those symbols in your story? Well, for me, uh, I my, my fairy godmother is very different. She's not the elderly, you know, uh, cool the old lady who has everything composed and collected. Uh, my fairy godmother is very flustered and kind of clumsy, and uh, she's sort of a little shallow, too, and uh, it's her clumsiness that sort of uh, sets the story in motion. And um, one thing that's kind of different in my story is um, the slippers aren't really used in a way you would think they would be used. I mean, she wears them to the ball, Tilly does, but um, the way at the very end of the story, I can't say how they're used, but they are used in a very unusual way. Well, that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to read it to find out. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I, I love that twist in that story, though. Oh, my gosh, that was a fun use of the slippers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, for me, when I was writing the story, definitely the most fun part was looking at the different Cinderella elements and thinking, how can I make this more sci-fi? And so I took the, the idea of the traditional Cinderella going to the ball in a coach, and I made that the, the mining vehicle. So Elsa pilots this coach across this lava-strewn planet as she's trying to gather ore. Uh, the ore is called Cendrillon, which is the French word for Cinderella. So I put in as many Easter eggs for the original, of the, the plethora of original Cinderella tales that are out there as I possibly could. Um, for mine, I kind of reimagined the way the midnight deadline was used. So instead of midnight being the time when she had to leave or else, you know, bad things would happen, um, Cinderella, or my Cinderella was promised that if she went to the vault, she could leave at midnight. So instead of midnight being the deadline of, you know, a dread, it was what she was looking forward to. Um, really, the glass slippers were kind of the thing that I took and stretched a little farther than, than the other elements because the glass slipper is usually a symbol of refinement and delicacy and you know, Cinderella's foot is really small. But Lady Alice is different than all the other Cinderella's and so she starts with the glass slipper as a joke because she has huge feet and so the, the glass slipper ends up being a bit of a mare's nest, really, and causing a lot more trouble than it's worth. And you'll have to read the story to figure out why, but that's kind of the deal with that. So, and my last question for you ladies is, why Cinderella? What drew you to her story? Well, for me, uh, my sister and I were watching a bunch of the old Disney movies on our VHS tapes, and because uh, we were preparing to go to Disney World again, and we wanted to catch up on all our old Disney movies. And so we were watching Cinderella, and we were at the part where uh, the king's attendant was in the Tremaine's household and reading the proclamation about how the slipper fits, the lady must marry the prince. And I was thinking, well, what if it fit on the wrong girl? Would she still have to marry the the prince, like would she be forced to marry him, and so that's kind of where I got my idea, but I didn't think much of it because I already had a bunch of stories I was thinking about, but then a few days later I found out about the contest and I was like, wow, this is perfect, I have an idea already, so that's that's where it started. And mine, mine started, I never have 
ever really liked the Cinderella story. I mean, I like it, but it's just not one of my favorites, and I, it's not one that I would choose to write a retelling about. And But as soon as Rugglewood Press announced the contest, immediately I became a fan of Cinderella. <laughs> it's my new favorite fairy tale. But um, so that's when I started thinking about the whole the Moon Masters Ball. I came up with the title first because you know, I, I wanted a good something mysterious, and the Moon Masters Ball that that was mysterious. So um, then I sort of formed the story, the circus, and the small little village of Winslow um, around that. And um, yes, but I never had any plans to write a Cinderella story. But I'm so glad that I decided to enter the Rugalwood Press contest. <laughs> I have to admit, I actually wasn't drawn to it initially. As much as I adore fairy tales, uh, to me that's not really what I wrote. I felt like that, that to me that was too far removed from what I typically write, which is speculative fiction. And then a friend was like, so put Cinderella in space. I was like, oh, yes. Yes, I could do that. So, And I think as the five of us have found, it's a story that lends itself very well to adaptation. It's very flexible. You can do so much with it. And it inspired me to go ahead and continue the series. So um, the next novella in the series just came out. It is The Battle of Castle Nebula. And continues the story of Elsa, well, a prequel, rather, to how Elsa became a minor. And kind of like the Cinderella before the Cinderella story. Honestly, it wasn't so much the Cinderella retelling as just I'm like, oh, hey, look it. Someone's hosting a, like a storytelling competition. I should learn to write a story. So <laughs> I had never really thought about writing a fairy tale retelling before, but I decided, hey, why not? So that's really my entire motivation. Um, well, originally, actually, confession time, I was like, wow, I don't, I don't know. Cinderella seems the story that has been most retold, just all over the world, every culture has a Cinderella story. And so I started with a story that was kind of based off of like a mer kingdom, you know, like under the sea or on a sea island, and I was just not feeling it. It was not going well. And so I just started thinking randomly one day about how my best friend would be if she was a Cinderella character. And she's just this political firebrand pretty much. She's spunky and stubborn and amazing. I love her to death. Um, but definitely not your classic Cinderella character. And so I just started asking myself, what would Katie do in this situation? And Lady Alice's character grew from there. So really, it was a very easy story for me to write because I already knew Alice. And it was pretty funny. I didn't even think the editors at Rugalwood would enjoy it as much as they did. I just wrote it to please myself, and it made me laugh, and I guess it made them laugh, too. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Those were the questions that I had. Now I'm going to uh, try and contact the other authors and see if we can splice them in between. Thank you for sticking with all the technical difficulties, and uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed reading your stories. You have it done an so excellent fun. job, and I look forward to reading more from each of you. Oh, yay. thank you so much thank for having us. So thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.